Hey crocheters, welcome back to our 2020 Christmas in July crochet along. This year we are making the Darcy deer pattern. And in the very first video, we made the head. So right now it's looking like this. Um, and here in the second video, we are going to be making the eyes, the nose, the horns, and the ears to put on this and really kind of bring it to life. So the materials we're going to need for this, um, to make the eyes and the nose. Yeah. Eyes and the nose, we're going to be using the 3.5 millimeter hook and some black medium weight yarn. Um, we're also going to use some white medium weight yarn for the highlights in the eyes. Um, to make the horn, we're going to be using white medium weight yarn. Mine is actually sitting right behind my screen right now, so I'll have to go get it. Um, because in, in my original pattern here, you can see I use sort of this tan colored yarn for the horns, um, but I since then have run out. And this is during, um, at the time of this recording, we're in the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, so I'm not going out and buying more yarn at this time. So I'm using white, which is what I have on hand. Um, so if you've got white medium weight yarn, cream, tan, you know, these sort of lighter neutral colors are going to be things that will work really well for the horns on Darcy Deer. Um, then lastly, to make the ears, we're going to be using Bernat Blanket Yarn in the colors taupe, almond, and white. Um, I've got them actually sitting right here. So taupe, almond, white. Um, and we'll be using the eight millimeter hook for that. So without further ado, let's get started making the eyes. <clears throat> All right, so for the eyes, we've got our black medium weight yarn and our 3.5 millimeter hook. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to magic ring single crochet six. So there's our magic ring. And then we're going to single crochet six into the loop. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And you're going to go ahead and pull it tight. So on the eyes, um, you can either work them in concentric circles or you can work them in a spiral. Um, it really just depends on, I guess, what, what you're looking for. Um, a concentric circle finishes it a little bit nicer and a spiral kind of ends it with a little bit of a ledge. Um, but I'm going to do a spiral for the sake of ease. Um, and we'll begin row two. So row two is increase six. We've got one, well, half of one. There we go. That's our first increase. Two, three, four, five, and six. Right, for row three, we're going to single crochet, single crochet one, and then increase. And we'll do that six times for a total of 18 stitches. All right, so this <clears throat> is our last increase right here. 
And then to kind of help ease the transition, we're just going to slip stitch into the next stitch and go ahead and cut pretty decently long tail, say anywhere between eight and 12 inches. And that is what our eye is going to look like. So the next thing we're gonna to want to do is take our yarn needle and our white medium weight yarn. And you're gonna take, I mean, you only need probably like six inches for one, um, but if you do more like 12 inches, you can um, do both eyes at the same time. Well, you can do the highlights in both eyes with the same thread without rethreading. That's what I'm trying to say, folks. All right. So I've already done the second eye, so I'm not going to worry about it, but I'll just show you what we're going to do here. So you're going to take your yarn needle and you're going to work in between the second and third row. And you're just going to insert your needle from the back to the front. Pull through so we've got an two inches on that side and we're going to go over one, two. So one, two, go down and push it to the back. Then we're going to go over one, working from the back to the front and then over one again, working in that row. So that's what our highlights look like. So then you're going to go ahead and take off your needle or if you're, um, if you went with a longer yarn tail, you can just cut it and then you can use the, the yarn that's already attached to do your next, the highlights in the next eye. Um, and then you're going to take these three yarns. This is the yarn end from our original magic ring and then our two highlight ends and you're going to loosely knot them. Then you're going to do it one more time. And you're going to pull that one a little bit tighter to make it nice and secure. And we'll go ahead and cut the yarn tails off. And then you're going to save the yarn tails in this entire project, your yarn scraps. And, um, cause we'll be using those later. So then what you're going to do is you're going to work in the opposite direction, um, in the second eye, making the next round of highlights. That way they are mirror images of each other like so. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to be sewing um, the eyes on and shaping the head. So for now, I'm going to just move this and give ourselves plenty of room to work here. So you're going to take some pins um, and you're going to place the eye in this sort of white eye marking. Um, you don't want it to be like right up here toward the front. You also don't want it to be clear here in the back. We're going not quite centered, but a little bit forward, if that makes sense. So we're looking at kind of the one, two, three, probably fourth and fifth ish rows of the eye. Um, and when I place eyes, I think that highlights, the orientation of the highlights matter. So personally, I think if the highlight is twisted like this, it almost looks like an angry, like an angry glint. Um, so I try and go s like nice and flat to the face or even over arch it just a little bit backwards. Um, so it looks kind of like open and <clears throat> I don't know, <laughs> open and approachable. Um, and then I just go ahead and pin it into place. You want to make sure any yarn ends like this just get tucked in the back. You don't want to be sewing over those and have them like poke out or something. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and place the eye on the other side. Kind of in this same area with a similar orientation in the highlights of the eyes. Oops, rogue pin. All right, and then what I like to do is I like to take a second and look and make sure I'm happy with the placement. 
So I'll be honest, I like how this eye is placed a little bit better than this one. Um, and this one is just not quite so far back. This one is sitting, I mean, it's still in that, let's see, we're going to look in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> so the front is sitting a little bit more in this eighth row where this one is maybe a little farther back. So I am going to move it forward just a smidge. So you really don't want to sew until you are happy with the placement. So I'm pulling mine up just a little bit and forward. All right, let's take a look at that. That looks better to me. One of the things I also do sometimes is I just like pre preliminarily shape it with my thumbs just to see if I like how that's going to sit. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, because in shaping the head is where we're going to get some more of the, the characteristics of the animal. And so if you can give yourself a preview by using your thumbs, that, um, yeah, it can just kind of help you see what the finished object is going to look like. All right, so we're going to go here, thread your yarn needle onto the yarn tail. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to work right underneath this inner edge, like so and pull it nice and tight. Then we're gonna work up through the two outside stitches and down through the next two stitches. Inside, inside and outside loop, that's what I mean when I say two stitches. Actually, what I mean is the two loops. All right, then we're gonna go under a yarn in the head. Then up through the next two loops down to the next pair of loops. In my opinion, this method of sewing on the eyes, um, this is also how we're gonna sew on the nose, makes for the cleanest look. Um, gives the eyes a nice round and finished shape instead of, um, instead of like, let me show you really quick. Do, 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 do. Instead of going like trying to go out here and then up through the, the last two loops in the eye, um, because when you do that, you get sort of these like hairy straggling lines. Actually, I'm going to pause and show you an example from my earlier work before I knew how to um, sew eyes on properly. You can see, tell this is an old project. This is one of my very first ones. You can see I've got all of these sort of like straggly lines um, because I I was going out into, you know, and then up, kind of whip stitching it on and um, try and bring that up a little closer. So you can see it's, it's not a very clean finished eye look. Um, it has these little like radiating lines around it which is just not the best look. So that's, that's why we do this this way. Cause it's nice and clean. All right. Continuing around. All right. Also, if you guys want to make a dough instead of a, um, a buck, you're thinking you'd like to, um, you know, leave off the horns. Um, when you get to, you know, maybe this part, you could, if you wanted, add eyelashes. And so for that, you actually do the exact opposite <laughs> of what I was saying. You go a little farther out. You're going to go maybe two rows back like this. Then you're going to go underneath and, and pull that through. I'm not going to, cause this is going to be a buck. Um, but that would give you, um, an eyelash and then you'd maybe go over one more stitch and do another eyelash, just kind of depending on the look that you want. All 
All right, at this point we're about three quarters of the way around. And uh, what we're going to do is you can take either some yarn scraps or a little bit of fiber fill and we're going to stuff it behind the eyes. So what this does, I'm just gonna stuff it like so. I mean, you don't want it to be so much that it like bugs out or like your stitches around here get loose, but you want to have just enough so that it gets a little bit more of a 3D shape. Um, when working with soft eyes versus safety eyes, they, they can often feel very flat, very, because they're sewn directly onto the head. Um, and so they, they don't have that three-dimensional shape that a, a safety eye does. So this is what I do to kind of compensate because I like the 3D shape. I think it makes it look um, <clears throat> a little more realistic, gives it a tad bit more character. Um, so if, if you want to give it that extra nice look, Go ahead and do that and then we'll just go ahead and finish sewing it off. There we go. So I've gone all the way around. And when you when you knot off, you want to be just as close as you possibly can be to this edge because you don't want to have any like weird stragglers. You, know, you don't want the knot to be out here for some reason. So we're just gonna tie off as close as we can. And still sometimes it's kind of hard, <laughs> hard to get a nice knot. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just weave in the ends. So with this means you kind of bury it in the project and just pull it out the backside. At least this is how I do it. And I'm gonna shape that a little bit. There we go with my hands. Then you can either cut this or you can just weave it in. I'm gonna do a little bit of a combo. There we go. So it's nicely buried in the project. So we're going to repeat the same thing on the other eye um, for attaching, and then we'll come back for the nose. All right, so now that we have the eyes sewn on on both sides, the next thing we're going to do is shape the head. So we're going to do this, um, you can either use a yarn needle or a doll needle. The nice thing about doll needles is that they're really long. The harder thing about doll needles is that they, um, they have a smaller eye, so they can be challenging in their own way. And about 12 inches of white medium weight yarn. So because um, on this day that I am recording, it's kind of a hot day and I'm having a hard time gripping needles. I am going to use the doll needle. I have um, done this multiple times, not using a doll needle, so it is possible. Um, but I'm going to use one for today. So what we're going to do is you're going to take the yarn after it's been threaded on and you're going to insert the needle at the corner, inside corner, you don't want it to actually be in the black yarn, just right here in the white yarn of the head. And you're going to insert it through to the other side. You're gonna try and get it right. You're gonna try and get it right to the corner of the other eye. So it takes a little adjusting because that's not where we want it. Oh man, I will say doll needles are a lot harder to adjust. It's much easier to get a yarn needle through here, but it's a lot harder to grab a yarn needle through here. So, you know, pros and cons, gives and, give and take. There we go. And yeah, 
that yarn that just popped through, that's a yarn that I was carrying. I'll just try and tuck that back in. There we go. That was one of the carry yarns from here around. Um, all right, so this is what our head looks like at the moment. So next we're going to insert the needle down half stitch and we're going to be going into the sort of middle bottom center of the head. So I think we're going to go basically like right below the nose into this portion of the head. So I've got to turn it around so I can uh, navigate this a little easier. I'll pull it through. You might need to use a pair of pliers for this. There we go. You're going to go ahead and pull the needle off of that side and thread it onto the other side. And I'll be honest, I'm going to switch to my, my yarn needle for this. I thought the doll needle was going to be a lot easier, but um, not necessarily so. So I want to show you guys that it, you can still do it with this. You're going to go ahead, go down a half stitch and we're going to try and end up on like the other side. So probably in the middle of this stitch. So we've got a little bit of yarn in between this end and the end we're going to make. So we're going to go like this. And with the smaller needle, you do have to, you have to kind of manhandle the head a little bit. Got to really squeeze so you can get it to where you want it. Just like that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to do a light knot like that. Then when we're looking at it, we're going to just pull. And you can kind of see how the, the eyes dimple in here at the corner. And the bottom of the head also gets a little bit of a dimple. I'm going to pull it a little more tight and when you're happy with how far it's dimpled in, you're going to knot it off again once or twice. And then you're just going to weave in those ends like so. And so that is where our head is for now. And so the next thing we're going to do is make the nose. All right, so for the nose, we're working again with our black medium weight yarn and our 3.5 millimeter hook. And we're going to start with a magic ring. Like so. Then we're going to single crochet two. One and two. We're going to do a half double crochet chain one, single crochet three, one, two, three, chain one, half double crochet, my yarn is splitting, <laughs> and then we're going to chain two. for a total of 11 stitches. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull that tight. And I would uh, recommend on the nose working in a concentric circle. So we're gonna go back through here. And close it off with the invisible slip stitch. like so. All right, for the next row, we're going to increase I'm going to single crochet two, one, Two. All right, then 
we'll do a triple increase. That means we're going to work three single crochets in the same stitch. So one, two, three. Then we're going to single crochet three. One, two, three. Triple increase again. So working three single crochets in that stitch. One, two, three, single crochet one, single crochet two. All right, so give that a nice tug. Just pull it through like that. Cut a nice long yarn tail. And I'm just gonna pull it through like that to kind of tie it off. And we've got our triangle shape nose. So the next thing we're going to do is sew the nose in place and bring our face over here. And we want to pin the nose right there on the tip of our very first magic ring <coughs> of the project. Pin it in place. Just like so. You're going to go ahead and thread your yarn needle onto the large yarn tail. This is the yarn tail from the magic ring and we will probably just weave it in at the very end. So we're going to use the same method in attaching the eyes. We're going to go here underneath a stitch in the head really close to that underside edge of the nose, then back up through the next pair of stitches, and down through the next pair of loops, sorry. And again, Working all the way around. All right, so here we are back at the beginning. Just gonna work up through this last stitch. Ooh, it's kind of a tight stitch. So I'm going through the next one. Yeah, I'm just gonna go here into the head. So because I have these two ends here together, I'm just going to knot them. I think they'll make for a better knot than trying to make just like a, a one-sided knot with the original or the yarn end I was just using. So when that's good and tied off, you're going to weave in the ends. And if ever the ends are too difficult to weave in, you can always, um, there we go. You can always, um, thread them onto a yarn needle 
and then tuck them in that way. All right, so once the yarn ends are all tucked in, it's going to look like this. All right, the next thing we're going to be making is the ears. So for this one, we're going to be using some different materials. We're going to use our, um, our color A yarn, which is taupe, our color B yarn, which is white, and our color C yarn, which is almond. <clears throat> so we're going to start with our A yarn. And our eight millimeter hook and we're going to magic ring single crochet six so we've got our magic ring here and we'll single crochet six one two three four five and six And we're going to pull that closed. And with the invisible slip stitch, we're going to close that row. In row two, we're going to single crochet. We're still working with our color A yarn, single crochet one, increase. And we'll do that again. Single crochet one and increase. And on the last um, half of that stitch, instead of pulling it through, we're going to switch to our color C yarn, which is our almond. And we're going to pull it through for the last half of the stitch like so. Then I'm just gonna crochet over these two ends and we'll do a single crochet. <clears throat> and increase. And because I know I'm going to be switching back to our color A in the last half of that stitch, I'm going to switch and pull through. And we'll go ahead and close with the invisible slip stitch. Right now my project is inside out. I'm going to flip it out right now. So there we go, that's right side out. Then we're going to, using color A, we're gonna single crochet one increase. Single crochet. Then we'll repeat that again, single crochet increase and single crochet and we're switching to our color C again so we're going to go ahead and pull that over finish off that half of the stitch there then we're doing one stitch of color C so pull that through finish off because we're switching to color B To our white here and I'm gonna try and crochet over all of these ends to just secure them in place I don't want anything coming unraveled we're gonna do an increase stitch so like that and the second half of that we're switching back to color C single crochet one and in the second half of that switching back to color A Whew, a lot of color switches. And we'll do a few more in this next round as well. So row four, after we close off with the invisible slip stitch. And a single crochet three, one, two, three and increase and repeat it again one two 
three. Increase. The last half of this, we're going to go ahead and do one stitch of color. See? So we switch there. Switch to color B at the end of that. Single crochet one. Increase. Switch back to our color C in the last half of that row. Single crochet one and switch back to our color B. I mean our color A. And we'll join with an invisible slip stitch. All right, so this is, that was the last row that we're going to use our color C in. So I'm going to actually crochet over it for a few stitches to keep it nice and secure, and then we're gonna cut it off. So we're gonna crochet with our color A. We're gonna single crochet 10. So I just did three. I'm gonna snip off the almond color, which is our color C, and just pull it out for now. So finish that up, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the last half of row ten will, or the, yeah, stitch ten, we'll switch to our color B. We're going to single crochet five, one, two, three, four, five, last half of this. Switch to our color A. We'll go ahead and finish it off. with the invisible join. All right, working with our color A here, we're going to single crochet three. One, two, three, and then decrease. One, two, three, and decrease. And the second half of that decrease stitch, we'll switch to our white yarn. We're going to single crochet three, one, two, three, and decrease. Then we'll switch back to our color A. Lots and lots of uh, color changes here in this part of the pattern. We'll go ahead and finish it off like so. So I had to include these images here in this because sometimes I even forget how I did things. Um, so we're not going to be stuffing the ear at all. Um, what we're going to be doing for the very last row is we're going to single crochet one like this. Then we're going to kind of flatten the ear and pinch it together. And we're going to single crochet across the, the pairs of stitches. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, and five. And so we'll, it, we're, it looks like we're gonna have six because we have that, um, that first stitch. So in the end, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go out of that very first single crochet right here on the opposite side of the ear. It's kind of a tight one. Um, and we're going to pull it through like that and we're just going to 
make a stitch and pull through like so to tie off. And what that does is it closes it right here. We've got this nice little ring um, and it gives the, the ear that sort of inward dimple. So you're going to make two ears and then we are going to attach them to the head. So we want our ears to be sitting right behind the white rose here, um, kind of toward the bottom middle-ish. You know, we, we don't want to put them up here on the top because that's where our antlers are going to sit. Um, so, but you know, we don't want them on the side like a deer we want, or like a sheep. We want them up just a little bit higher. So we're going to go about, right about there. So if you can see that, we're kind of the last, last two, three stitches here in the white, but still kind of at an upward angle. So you're going to, if possible, pin it into place. I say if possible because <clears throat> normal straight pins are just really not sufficient um, to hold these things in place. <laughs> the working with Bernat blanket yarn, it's just a little bit too mighty, we'll say, for the average yarn to really hold on to. So one thing you can do is you could like use another crochet hook and just sorta weave it through to hold it in place. And that's probably what I will do for this right now because these little pins are just not gonna really be strong enough to hold it there. So you'll be placing the other, the other ear in the same manner, just sort of right, right about there. Um, I'll show you how to sew on the first one and then I'll let you guys go ahead and do the second one so we can get started on the antlers. So you can either use a large yarn needle or a 5.5 um, millimeter hook. I personally like to use hooks to help attach because I don't enjoy threading yarn needles. So I'm just going to take this yarn tail like this and I'm just gonna pull it here through a very close stitch in the head. I like to work counterclockwise. It works well for me because I'm right-handed. Then I go up underneath the stitches here, like one stitch. and then pull it down through a stitch in the head. Up through another stitch in the ear. Gotta pull that out, it's in the way. And down through a stitch in the head. So I'm just going to work this all the way around. like so. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. And we're almost back to the top. So I'm just pulling it all the way around this sort of like inner loop. It's nice and secured. And then you're going to knot off and weave in the ends. Um, so go ahead and attach your other ear and then we'll meet back to work on the horns. All right, so now we're going to start on the antlers and we're going to be using our 5.5 millimeter hook, which we've been using a lot lately. And um, the pattern originally calls for tan yarn. I am out, so I'm going to be using white, medium weight yarn. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a magic ring. And we're going to single crochet seven into that ring. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. All right, go ahead and pull that tight. And so the horns, I'm gonna shape that around a little bit so that it's not quite such a, a reach for the next stitch. The horns um, on this pattern, you can work in concentric circles or you can work in spirals. It just depends on what you'd prefer. It's not going to affect the pattern really either way. Um, so I'm going to just do, con um, I'm gonna do spirals cause it's a little bit faster. So I'm going to grab my little piece of black yarn, which is my running stitch marker, and we'll move on to row two. So row two through eight is going to be single crochet, seven stitches. So this very first one can be a little bit challenging because it's a little tighter, um, but it's really pretty basic, pretty simple here. We're just going to single crochet one stitch into each of the stitches we've already made. And I don't know about for you guys, but like my very like first one to two, sometimes three rows tend to uh, want to work inside out. Like this is, this is curling inward. So now I've got those seven stitches done. I'm going to go ahead and peel this out so it's facing the right way. There we go. And um, just continue crocheting around. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and do that until you have those eight rows. I would recommend um, probably after row four, every couple rows just adding a little bit of fiber fill into it so it has a nice um, full look. And then you're going to just cut a two inch tail at the end and then we're going to get started on the tall horn. So you're gonna want to make two of these um, and then we'll get started on the tall horn. All right, so here for the tall horn, we're doing the same thing, except we're going to magic ring single crochet eight. It's only one stitch difference from the uh, short horn as far as like the circumference around, uh, but it actually makes quite a, a difference in the size. So I've got three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Go ahead and pull the yarn tail tight. Shape it around a little bit. Grab our running stitch marker and we'll move on to the next row. So rows two through um, 13, very similar to what we had going on with the last horn, the short horn, we're going to be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. Um, we're going to be just be making these long tubes. So the, the rows two through 13 are going to be just single crochet eight. Um, and also similar to the Similar to the short horn, you are going to make two. I'm going to recommend you make one and then uh, finish watching the rest of the horn because it will show you how to attach the two pieces together um, and then make the second one and finish the second horn. So go ahead and do your single crochets, add your fiber fill every few rows and I will see you guys when we get to uh, joining our two pieces together and finishing up the horn. So now we've finished our 13 rows of single crochet eight. So we're going to, at this point, take our short horn and our tall horn. The tall horn is still attached to our yarn ball and we're going to attach them 
together. So I kind of have a diagram here uh, to, to show what we're going to be doing. You can definitely just watch my hands. Uh, this is actually mostly for me, so I remember kind of what we're doing. So we're going to be working into this very next what would be like the next stitch if you, we were still crocheting on the short horn. So we're going to insert our hook. I want to yarn, um, like crochet over this yarn tail so it's nice and secure. So I'm just going to hold it like this. I'm going to yarn over. And before I pull it through, I'm going to give that a nice tug. That way I pull these two horns together. Um, and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through. That's going to be our very first stitch. So if you um, have like a nice stitch marker or something, I would mark that stitch so you know where you are. Um, I'm just going to use the safety pin I have right here. Usually I use a running stitch marker, but when it comes to like this sort of joining transition, it can be a little bit of a challenge. So I'm just going to throw that in there for now uh, to mark my spot. So, so we've done that first join. So now we're just going to crochet around um, and the total at the end should be 16. So work a single crochet into the stitches all the way around. Um, all right, and at this point, I'm gonna stop crocheting over that yarn tail. I think it's pretty secure, so I'm not gonna worry about that anymore. And I'll keep working around. So this can be kind of a challenging thing. I don't know when, when joining two crochet pieces, like, I don't know if you saw what just happened. Um, like, like this right here looks like it's a stitch, but really it's, well, actually, yeah. It's like the back side of a stitch kind of, and then we've got this side here, which is like the, um, it's, it's like the, the height difference between the rows. So it, it can be a little bit confusing. Basically what we're going to do is there's this sort of extra stitch here. We are going to work into that. Um, otherwise we'd end up with a big gap in the back. So we're going to single crochet there and then continue to work our way around. You know, because if we, if we just had all of the single crochets, like the seven from this horn and the eight from this one, we'd end up with 15. And that extra one is what gives us our, our 16 single crochets. And if it's a little bit muddy back there when you're doing it and it's hard to see, don't worry about it too much, just, throw a stitch somewhere back there. Um, you, we just want the stitch count to be right. And we want the stitches to be placed in, in, you know, basically the right spot. Um, and you don't want a gap there. So it, that is one of the stitches. It doesn't matter too much where it's placed. All right. And last stitch for the round like so. So now I'm going to remove this because I really don't like using them and I'm going to switch to a piece of yarn. Um, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this yarn tail and I'm going to just try and stuff it into the project. I've got a pencil here. Let's see if it'll, because I don't want this getting uh, confused with anything else. And you know, plus it helps fill out the horn. So that's all good. Alrighty. So moving on to row 15. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decrease. So we'll do our invisible decrease, kind of grab the first loop of that next stitch which is kind of hard to see because of my black yarn. Sorry about that. Pull it to the side. All right. 
So that was kind of a tight stitch in there. So that was the joining stitch. All right, so we decreased one, and now we're going to single crochet four. One, two, three, and four. And then we'll decrease one more time. Oof, making tight stitches today. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right. So row 16, we're going to start off with another decrease. There we go. Decrease, single crochet two. One and two. And decrease again. Single crochet eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. seven, and eight. All right, so at this point, you're gonna to want to stuff a little bit more fiber fill or yarn scraps, whichever you would like, into your horn. So you don't want it to get, you don't wanna to go too many rows without stuffing, otherwise it can be kind of a challenge to get it filled out nicely. There we go, so that's one side, and we'll do the other side. All right, now you're ready to continue on to the next row. All right, so rows 17 through 22, you're just going to single crochet 12. So I'm going to um, go ahead and let you guys do that. Just go ahead and work a single crochet into each of these 12 stitches. I would every two or three rows add a little bit more stuffing as you go, um, just to make it a little bit easier on you. Um, and then we'll meet back for row 23. All right, so here we are. We've finished up our twin you know we're up to row 22 all right and row 23 um, we're going to do a bobble stitch and an increase so for this row uh, I guess for these bobbles you can make bobbles kind of as full or not as you'd like um, but here's how we're going to do it you're going to yarn over then you're going to insert it hook into the next stitch yarn over and pull through so you've got these three loops on the hook. You'll yarn over and you'll pull through these first two, and then you won't pull through the second. You're going to yarn over again, insert into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. 
So we've got three loops, do it again, just as we've been doing here like this, and pull through the first two loops. That way we keep gathering a loop. So you could, at this point, um, close off your bobble stitch. I'm going to do one more in here, because um, I like it to just be a little bit more full than three for this project. So pull through those first two loops. So now we've got five loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all of them. While you do that, um, it's easiest, in my opinion, if you kind of keep your finger right here in the back of it, pushing it forward, you know, pushing the bobble out. Because at least for me, bobbles like to kind of uh, pop inward. All right, so then we're going to peel it to the side a little bit so we can make sure we can see our next stitch and we're going to increase. There's our single crochet and now it's an increase. All right, so we're gonna do that all the way around. So we'll have six bobble stitches by the time we're done. All right, and here's our last stitch of our increase. Like so, then we're gonna cut a nice long tail. Ten inches or so. And pull that through and pull out your running stitch marker going to want to add a little bit more stuffing to this. I mean, they're like actual stuffing tools if you'd like to use those. You can use an end of a crochet hook. Um, we'll probably stuff a little bit more here in the very end. Um, and then we're going to attach. So I'm going to set this to the side so we can work on attaching our horns to the head. So obviously you're going to need to make two horns following this pattern. Um, we're going to be placing our horns right, right above the ears, just like this. Um, and so if, yeah, to do this, you're going to want to get some pins and uh, do what you can to hold it in place. We've established the pins are not mm, always the strongest for these. If you have like floral pins at your disposal, those are usually a little bit longer. They're like a full two inches where these are like an inch to an inch and a quarter. Sorry, I know my hands are gonna be in the way which makes it awfully difficult for you guys to see what I'm doing. So just place it like this. So the bobble stitches here at the bottom, um, they just sort of give that texture um, of the, the part of the horn right where the, the horn is growing out of the head. Most deers kind of have this, this sort of like a lumpy 
textured horn. Um, and so that's, that's what we're trying to recreate. So we're going to, yep, just have our horns like so. And it doesn't matter which one you start on. You're just going to thread your yarn needle onto one of the tails from the horn. And then very similar to how we did the eye and the nose, we're just going to work really close right underneath a stitch in the head and kind of come up through the base of the stitches in the horn. Peeling it back, trying to figure out exactly where I want to go through. There we go. And then back through. So you're just going to continue like this all the way around. And if you need to, once you've gone about three quarters of the way around, you can go ahead and add a little bit more stuffing up in the base of the horn. Sometimes it's hard to get it as full as you'd like before sewing it on. So you can just add a little more there. There we go. And then we'll finish sewing it on. All right, so now we've pretty much worked all the way around. We're just going to come down here and knot it off. And that, folks, was not the best knot I've ever made. <laughs> that was kind of rough. All right, so I'll try one more time. All right, and when it's knotted off, I'm just gonna bury it into the project, like so. Then weave in slash cut the excess. So I'll pull some of it in, cut some of the excess. And the first horn is on. So you're going to do the exact same thing with the second horn and just attach all around, add a little bit more fiber fill or uh, yarn scraps if it needs a little bit more filling out. And then you are done with the head. All right, crochet. so now we have finished our head. We, um, in this video, we did the eyes, the nose, the ears, and the horns, and they're all attached and it is looking swell. We are ready to start the body in the next video because this one has been plenty long so far. So stay tuned for the next Darcy Deer video in our Christmas in July crochet along for 2020. See you guys there. I am excited to continue making Darcy Deer.